Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Blatstein. I'm the physician founder of Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. I too will spend time in federal prison and I'm here now to help you on your journey. After the video, you can check out my website at pprsus.com, Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service, and I'll have that information that will be on the video itself. So as you see with this press release, telehealth is going to be coming to the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And it's going to be, it's going to be, it is starting out only in a, in a couple prisons providing outpatient specialty medical services. <clears throat> and the prisons are going to be FCI Bastrop in Texas, Laredo in, Pen in Pennsylvania, SeaTac in Washington State, and FCI Williamsburg in South Carolina. Current specialties that they're going to provide are going to include cardiology, nephrology, gastroenterology, psychiatry, podiatry, wound care, pulmonology, endocrinology, rheumatology, general surgery, orthopedic surgery, dermatology, internal medicine, urology, and more. Now, these are pretty specific, uh, if you will, specialties. And not to get your high hopes up, but currently, <clears throat> should you need a specialist in any of these categories, if you're lucky, it may take up to three years, but you'll be able to leave the facility and go see a specialist. But don't fool yourself. The Federal Bureau of Prisons is not obligated to follow the specialist recommendations. Now, because this is contracted direct to the facility via telehealth, I'm not really sure how they're going to work in surgical procedures. Also, I'm not sure if they're going to be sending in recommendations that are of medical benefit to us, or they're going to stick within the bylaws or the, you know, the cost containment structure of what the BOP is willing to pay. They have a big disclaimer here on the website and you can go through. <clears throat> um, there's looking forward statements. Here's how to contact them directly. But what they say is that readers should not place undue reliance on any forward looking statements. More information on risk factors relating to VC Health and its technology and billing services is included from time to time in the cautionary note regarding forward looking statements and risk factors. Many involve <clears throat> known and unknown risk, uncertainties, and other factors that may cause performance or achievements to materially differ from historical results or any future performance or achievements expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. And there is contact information that you can have to connect with them directly. So my, from my own experience, there was a point in time where I visited senior centers where I had approximately 700 beds that I was responsible for. And when I wasn't able to get to them, I would then set up not telemedicine because it wasn't at that. We didn't have telemedicine at that time. It was in the nineties, but we would, I would have them bring a camera in and take a video, show me what the wound looked like. And I would be able to at least provide some sort of support care until I was able to get to, to the facility. But re reading and look, reading and interpreting their disclaimer. You know, yeah, we hope that the telemedicine will help, but it's really going to be up to the Federal Bureau of Prisons and the warden's clinical director and the warden itself as to how much of their recommendations will be implemented and carried forth to ensure continu continuity of your medical care within the community. I hope you found this helpful. Um, it does appear in looking at this that Telehealth is came came about very successfully following or during COVID and in following COVID. And so there may be benefit. I see it more practically in terms of radiology and pathology services, but only time will tell. I thank you for tuning in. Have a safe day. And any questions, please comment. Have a good day.